Hello again, you sick, twisted weather freaks, and welcome to another fun-filled, action-packed, and intellectually stimulating edition of This Week in Weather. I'm your host and meteorologist, DT from WX Risk. I'm your commander of chaos, colonel of confusion, captain of catastrophe. We got a lot to talk about in This Week in Weather, including another potentially significant, maybe even more significant, severe weather event on Good Friday, uh, April 9th and then into Saturday morning in some areas on the 20th. So let's get right to it. It's a big holiday, a lot of questions. I'll do a now as we go through this, I will do a complete rundown and then breakdown at the end of the video. So if you want to skip over some of the meteorology, you can do that if you want to, but I would suggest you not. Um, so we'll see. All right, let's get started. Okay, our topics here, we'll talk yesterday a little about uh, what happened yesterday, some basic terms and concepts we have to go over here so you understand how serious I think Friday, April 19th and Saturday, April 20th will be, and then we'll do the actual forecast itself. This is the official storm reports from uh, the Storm Prediction Center for the event yesterday into Monday morning. This is as of 8 p.m. on uh, this Monday evening, and the blue dots are severe weather in terms of high winds from thunderstorms. The red dots are tornadoes. As you can see, officially there are uh, no tornadoes reported in Virginia or North Carolina and only two in Maryland and Delaware. A uh, lot more activity in Ohio and western and central Pennsylvania, but that was about it. So it was not a significant tornado outbreak uh, here in this part of the middle Atlantic region at all. So that's, you know, if you want to argue the point, you can, but you're wrong. This is the official data, so shut up. You're wrong. Okay, uh, this is the official information from, uh, again, Storm Prediction Center, and you can see uh, different locations here, uh, Al Alabama, Alabama, or Georgia, Ohio, Ohio, Pennsylvania. The last two are what's important right in here. You can see uh, in uh, Maryland and in Delaware the possible tornadoes in these areas, and they have been confirmed. Uh, the new update has confirmed them. Okay. Then I posted this on the uh, Facebook page uh, today. Ideal weather through Friday, certainly no problems at all. And then severe weather threat on a, uh, coming up this Friday afternoon evening looks pretty serious for Virginia, North Carolina, Maryland, Delaware, Delaware, and West Virginia. Important point, really pay attention right here. Also New England. New England's going to get hit with this late Friday night and Saturday. So again, if you have travel plans, pay attention. We use me, use whatever weather source you want to. Uh, this is going to be, a, like I said, potentially significant event. All right. So I posted this on the, on the uh, Facebook page earlier. So three different maps here. We can talk about them briefly. The one here in the bottom right, um, well, let's do the upper top map. This is the upper air map of what, I, of what the European model says is going to happen on Friday evening, Saturday morning. So there are three pieces of information here. So you see the green right in here. You see this little uh, uh, green and black lines here that's the upper low okay so uh, you can see there's a closed low um, over Il Illinois Indiana and you see that now um, that's called an upper low now the blue line shows the tilt the trough axis every trough has a particular trough axis or an alignment so for example let's take a look at this little feature here you see this one right here in the over the Pacific Northwest if I were to draw the trough axis in, it would be running like this. You see that? So this one is running northwest to southeast. And when it runs northwest to southeast like that, it's have it called having a negative tilt. And it's always a dangerous sign when you have low pressure with the upper level uh, pattern showing a negative tilt. And the purple area, you see this purple area in here? That represents the strong winds coming around the base of the trough. We'll get into that in a minute, why that's going to feed these thunderstorms and make things pretty bad. Okay, now the upper, the bottom right map, bottom left map here, this represents the winds on the European model at one mile above the ground on Friday evening at 8 p.m. You can see the very strong winds here um, off to 60, 70 knots over central and eastern uh, Maryland, uh, Virginia, eastern North Carolina, uh, into Pennsylvania, New Jersey. Now, when you have a thunderstorm, remember, thunderstorms at the, at the ground here. So let me get my map. Thunderstorm at the ground. And remember, it builds up in the top of the atmosphere, right? So when you have heavy rain coming down, it often pulls these high winds but down to the ground. And you can see, sure enough, the model is showing winds up to 65 or 75 miles an hour in some areas on a Friday night. 
that was from this morning now to understand why this is there are different types of troughs so we talked about that briefly a negatively tilted this is a positive tilt let's do this one here first so this is the positively tilted trough just like we showed um, right here on this map okay so this is a positively tilted see this one here that's positively tilted now the other type is the neutral is the negatively tilted trough which is this one here there you go Negatively tilted troughs indicate low pressure developing. They indicate differential evection. That is to say, you have uh, warm air on this side, and then you have cold air coming in that side. They also indicate good vertical wind shear, which is necessary for tornadoes in severe weather. And a deep low pressure area, negatively tilted with warm moist sector, comet east of the Rockies, often produces a severe weather outbreak in the spring and summer months. That's a, a deep low pressure, negatively tilted, Again, look what that statement says. That's what's important. So, sure enough, that's what this shows. Okay, now let's take a look, compare that to what we just saw. This was Sunday's upper air map, okay, for the system we just had last night, Sunday afternoon. Notice the tilt here. This is the upper level map. You see the black line? See how it's neutral? It's going to do its north to south, all right? And then 12 hours later, it did this. Now it developed a negative tilt. And of course, it, the, the, the upper air, the atmosphere went kablooey, and we had all the severe weather, the thunderstorms, the few tornadoes, the, a little bit of hail, damaging winds, power outages, the trees going down, winds gusting up to 70 miles an hour. And that's just with a negatively tilted trough moving through. That is not the same as, a, as, as what the European model is showing, which is this. Compare that to that. Big difference. <clears throat> excuse me so the difference again we can take a look at those purple area the strong winds come around the base of the trough and then what happens is they spread out in different directions so the winds go to here and then they go up here off the coast and they go here and when you have spreading winds like that that's called difluence difluence big term in meteorology and really important for setting up the thunderstorms and the moisture and the precipitation whether it's a coastal storm whether it's a, a severe weather event or whether it's a nor'easter the difluence is a big deal and this is what happens this is just a diagram from one of the meteorology books so just post it on there you can see it so here just without getting i don't want to get too technical but this is what happens you see the winds coming in this direction and then this direction and this direction so um just like when the ocean, when you have upwelling, you know, and, and you have the ocean water temperatures, and then a pool, what happens is you have constant winds blowing in this direction, causes the waters, the temperatures to change. And what happens is it blows the top of the warm water away, and then you have uh, the cold water coming up underneath it. Or suppose you have a hurricane, which comes up the East Coast, and it, destroy, and it disrupts the warm water of the Atlantic Ocean. Well, the cold water underneath it replaces it. When you have difluence in the atmosphere, it the, the upper level winds spread out like we see here but then the surface winds where the thunderstorms are have to come up to replace it see that and that causes the thunderstorms to explode into the atmosphere so difluence aloft produces strong severe thunderstorms during severe weather outbreaks this is just a basic diagram to show you how it does that and again the key op point here is this divergence or difluence aloft generates upward motion from the ground into the atmosphere which it causes the thunderstorms to explode so that's why the thunderstorms did this yesterday okay we had a little bit of difluence here if you look at the lines this line went this direction this line went this direction and the thunderstorms exploded here we have a much stronger difluence much much stronger because of the much bigger system now this is just a schematic of what it looks like again from one of the weather textbooks so here, the up, the up, you can see the surface low pressure. See the red L? That's the surface low over Iowa. Okay, and then the black, solid black lines are the upper level maps, like we just saw. Um, uh, we saw in here, upper level map. Okay, so look at the black line, and then you can see the solid black line. That's the negative tilt. You see how it's running northwest to southeast? So this was a big system that was over the Midwest, and it went boom, and you had a big outbreak. 
It produced snowstorm in the upper Midwest and heavy rain and severe weather in the Midwest. Now, that's just a textbook example of it. This is the new European, brand new, hot off the presses. And again, for Monday afternoon, valid for Friday, 8 p.m., you can see the solid black line right here. See that? Negatively tilted. And here's the difluence. Look at the purple lines. You see like this direction and this direction and then this direction. That's difluence loft, which is what causes the winds to rapidly expand and thunderstorms in that part of the system to go kablooey. If we look at the surface, if we look at the winds at 850, one mile above the ground, this is Friday afternoon, 2 p.m. See the dark red, 55 to 60 knots. A few white dots, 60 knots. That's 60 to 65 miles an hour, 70 miles an hour. One mile above the ground. So when you get thunderstorms, they pull those winds down and you get strong straight line winds. Or and potentially tornado winds if you have enough shear. By 8 p.m. on Friday, look at this. See the dark white? running from off the coast of North Carolina all the way up into Albany, 65 to 75 knots. Very impressive winds here. Uh, the, and then this is the GFS, very strong agreement. Look how close the GFS looks like here. Look at this, and you compare it to that. That's really good model agreement this far out in time. Both of the GFS, uh, uh, Friday afternoon, Friday evening, and to early Saturday morning, closed, upper low, see the green, separated, closed system, negatively tilted, difluence on the east coast, strong winds, very impressive. And the GFS shows that. This is the upper level winds, just like here, the European, let's look at the GFS upper level winds, one mile above the ground. This is in the upper right here. Oops, let me call my marker again. This is 8, 8 a.m. Friday morning. You can see the winds here on the red, 55, 60 knots. Just from developing Friday, 8 p.m. Look at this. Boom. Look at that dark white load and pink in here. That's 65, 70 knots coming into North Carolina, Virginia. The storms are going crazy at this point, if this is correct. And then we can see it again. This is now on the upper right. We have uh, Saturday at 2 a.m. Look at those strong winds coming up into New England. And then Saturday morning, there it is off the coast. It's ended for Virginia, North Carolina, Maryland, but New England's getting hit early Saturday morning. Very impressive. And this is just in case you were, I don't want to overlook the southeastern folks. Now, all of this high winds on Friday afternoon, 4 p.m., you can see that, is going to be over here Friday morning. So it's just moving in that direction. Okay. So, yes. Eastern Tennessee, North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia schools hit, will be hit on Friday morning. Now, here are some other interesting uh, indications from the European model. So this is surface to 850 shear. And if you look at these values, this is from the ground up to one mile above the ground. Remember, you need shear changes in the wind to help you cause tornadoes to develop. So the higher the numbers, the more dangerous this is. And as you can see, at Friday evening, 8 p.m., we have this Impressive area of yellow, which is 60 knots here and over here. Very impressive. So that's a lot of shear here. Very dangerous looking situation. This is from the surface, 700 millibars, which is two miles above the ground. And we can see the, 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 the um, uh, light green in this whole area here. This is 50 to 60 knots of shear here as well. Also, very impressive. North Carolina, Maryland, Delaware, uh, Virginia, eastern Pennsylvania, New Jersey. Now, this is the helicity values on Friday morning, which are pretty good. Anything over 300 is like strong, severe weather. And then anything over 400 is tornadoes, generally. So you can see the, the brown in this area. This is Friday morning, 8 a.m. And then look what happens here by Friday evening. The thing goes crazy. And you look at this pink stuff. This pink stuff, in case you're wondering, look at this right in here. That's 450. That's like a really big tornado threat potential and severe weather storm threat. Hey, oh, that's that's significant. Don't know if it's right. I mean, again, this could all change, folks. This could all change. This is now, uh, now this is interesting. This is the European simulated radar from several days ago for last night. Okay? Just to give you an idea. And uh, this is from last Friday. And it showed, for last night, it showed some storms here, some storms here, some storms here. Not that impressive. Activity, but nothing too serious. This is the new European for this is the European for Friday 8 p.m. If that's what it was showing for Sunday and then we ended up getting slammed, this is what it's showing for Friday. 
that could be really a lot of severe weather. That's a very impressive radar signature from the European model this far out in time. Do you have an idea of how this is going to develop? Okay, here we go. Pay attention. Friday morning, 8 a.m. Here's low pressure here. The cold front's here. Everybody here is dry. Eastern Virginia, eastern North Carolina, uh, central and eastern Pennsylvania, Maryland, Delaware, New Jersey, New York, New England. You're fine. But Ohio's getting hit. West Virginia, eastern Kentucky, eastern Tennessee, far west of North Carolina. Georgia's getting hit. Okay, good. Then we have, um, this is uh, Friday evening, 8 p.m. We actually have another low which forms over, can you believe this, over central Virginia, just outside of Richmond. See that? And there's the low, and the front is going right through here. And we have tremendous rains, all this area up and down the East Coast. And obviously severe weather as well. And then uh, this is a Saturday morning. Now, by Saturday morning, we still have May, still have rain in Richmond. I don't think so. I think, But Norfolk, May, Salisbury, eastern Pennsylvania, all in New England, yes, you're still getting hit. So this is still a big event for Saturday all over New England here. This is not done yet Saturday morning for New England and New Jersey and New York, maybe the Delmarva. All right, key points here. Here we go. All right, all of this can change. It's still early, but it's looking pretty ominous. Friday morning, 7 a.m., storms and heavy rains over Ohio, eastern Kentucky, West Virginia, far southwest Virginia, eastern Tennessee, uh, west of North Carolina, Georgia. Okay, this is, this is 8 a.m. on Friday. Okay, this is what's being hit. That means if you're in Pennsylvania, if you're in New York, if you're in New Jersey, if you're in Delaware, Maryland, Richmond, Fredericksburg, Charlottesville, Roanoke, uh, Central and East North Carolina, Norfolk, Hampton Roads, you're still dry. If you have guests coming in, if you have plans still, you're okay Friday morning. All right? That's the first point. Now, this is Friday, 2 p.m. Now the shit's hitting the fan. The cold front is now here. And you can see the heavy rain is now in the Shenandoah Valley. It's in western mountains of North Carolina. It's moving into the Shenandoah Valley, west of Maryland. There it is. I get most of Virginia, North Carolina. This is still a little all dry in here. This is all still dry. But it's coming east. You can see it. Now, by this is uh, uh, Friday, 8 p.m. Now, if you're in Ohio, if you're western Pennsylvania, this is all now ended. See, this is all now ended. It's all dry in here. But the main area is this. Okay. At this point, Everybody's being hit. The Virginia Piedmont, North Carolina Piedmont, up to I-95, Washington, D.C., Baltimore, Altoona, Gettysburg, Harrisburg, uh, Lancaster, uh, State College, uh, the Poconos. Everybody's getting hit. Now, it probably has not yet reached Richmond or Norfolk or Hatteras or Elizabeth City or, or the Delmarva or New Jersey or New York City. It has not reached those areas at 8 p.m. on Friday, but it will soon approximately after that time so again if you have people coming in friday morning or midday you are okay you don't have a problem with that if you have plans shopping whatever you're okay friday morning midday on the east coast finally this is um excuse me make sure this is yeah uh, 8 p.m and then this is um uh this is saturday at 2 a.m now the whole thing has moved i-95 eastward uh, into the coastal areas. It's ended in western Pennsylvania. It's ended in, oops, it's ended in um, in western Virginia. Uh, it's still going on. You can see at 8 p.m. on Friday, southwest Virginia, it's over already down in here, by the way, west North Carolina. So it ends there pretty quickly. And then, but my point is that on Saturday, Friday night into Saturday morning, still getting slammed over the entire eastern half of North Carolina, Virginia, all of Maryland except for western Maryland, the Delmarva, uh, Eastern Pennsylvania. It's about to move to New Jersey and New York City. Um, so that's what it's looking like. Anyway, uh, I hope this video helped explain what it is. I'm not going to go out telling you people that we're going to get huge tornadoes. It's going to be a big outbreak. I don't do that. The people who make that decision are the Storm Prediction Center. I don't go against them. I may agree or disagree with some of their analysis, but I carry all the watches and warnings. I don't contradict them. Um, you know, I. I don't think I do anyway. Maybe I do, but I don't think I do. And I'm not going to tell you to build shelters and down with head for the hills and have big giant capital letters. We're all going to die. And this is going to be a historic outbreak. It'll be up to the Storm Prediction Center to make that call. Um, this could just be a bunch of very strong straight line winds and hail and a lot like we just had, maybe even stronger winds. Okay. The other difference is that a lot of this is occurring during the daytime and the evening hours as opposed to late evening and overnight. 
which is what happened yesterday. So that uh, extra daytime activity, uh, temperatures make it close to 80 degrees um, over eastern Virginia, eastern North Carolina, the Delmarva, New Jersey um, um, on Friday afternoon before the clouds come in. So that's a big deal as well. So anyway, that's my presentation. Uh, I'll be following this closely on the Facebook page and more updates. Until then, we'll try and take it easy. You don't want to freak people out too much. But, you know, if you are aware of this and you can make your plans, after this blows through, all right, uh, Sunday, Easter Sunday looks fabulous for the East Coast. Everybody, okay? And um, by Saturday afternoon, it looks much improving over the East Coast as well. So Easter Sunday does look good. Do not panic about that. So Easter Sunday, I'm very confident, will be fine, dry, sunshine, no problems. This is meteorologist DT from Weather Risk. I'll talk to you soon.